Good morning. Welcome to worship. Welcome to Trinity. Had that awkward silence, which told me it was time for me to get to work. So I'm, I'm grateful that you all are here. Today is a really great day. We are celebrating the baptism of our brother Drake. Um, and he's going to speak his identity statement when we get to that point. We are also welcoming a new member. We're welcoming Dave into our body of Christ, which is also exciting. Along with that, we are stepping into a new, uh, a new liturgy, which means we're going to have some new words. For those of us who have hung out in this space for a while, you are going to hear, and we are all together going to be speaking words a little bit different, not like strain. We're not, this isn't that much of Acts. We're going to speak in different languages but some of the layout's going to feel a little bit different. So it's great that we're all going to do it together, which means we are going to be ready for summer because this is, the, this is the layout that we're going to use for all of summer and actually into September as well. So a reminder for all of us. All the words that we need are up on the screen up here. All the words to the music are up here as well. If you need the musical notations for any of the songs that we are singing, you can find those in the red book in front of you marked Worship on the Binder. Other than that, I am simply grateful that you are here. So let us begin. Please rise as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose words never fail, whose promise is sure. Amen. 
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have, we, we have squandered your blessing. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we have confessed that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God is good all the time. Let us pray. God of life, break us of our fear and set our hearts ablaze. Renew a right spirit within us that we may know your love and know our call to speak it beyond these walls. Let your fires of hope burn within us. In your name we pray. Amen. We open our Bibles to the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 1. When Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound from heaven, like the howling of a, first, of a fierce wind, filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, "Look." Aren't all these people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? 
How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the regions of Libya bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretes and Arabs. We hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them saying, they're full of new wine. Peter stood with the other 11 apostles. He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, know this, listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk as you suspect. After all, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will change into darkness and the moon will be changed into blood before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Gospel according to John, we are in the 20th chapter. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came, stood among them. He said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. What feels like long ago in what was probably a galaxy far away, I was sitting in a room full of confirmands, and we were gearing up for affirmation of baptism, the day that we are celebrating with our brother, Drake. And we were sitting at tables, and I had asked those who were about to be affirmed in their baptism to choose a Bible verse, because at that point, that's what we did. You're welcome, Drake. You don't have to do that. But I would ask them all to pick a verse or a text or something. It didn't really matter, and I didn't put a lot of parameters on it. I just said, pick something that you think kind of fits with you. That's about it. So we ran around the table for those who were about to be affirmed in their baptism and, you know, someone picked something from the Psalms and someone had something from the Gospels. And my brother Jake had Jeremiah chapter 20. Chapter 20, verse 9. Now, in, this is the translation, I should say, this is the translation that we read and worship now, a little different from the one we were reading then. There's an intense fire in my heart trapped in my bones, which sounds beautiful. It sounds great, this idea of God moving in a person, moving within the, the flesh and within their bones. Now, something you should know about my brother Jake, he was a large kid, big kid, strong kid, super quiet. 
It took forever to kind of drag words out of him, and he, they would come out of him kicking and screaming, kind of with a whisper or with a mutter. But he was smart, he was great, and he was very capable with his hands. He's kind of the kid that at first impression you think he's probably a lineman, but he never played football. He came every time we would gather for youth group or every time that we had confirmation, and quite honestly, he came quite often to church. He picked this verse, and it was beautiful, but it wasn't this translation. It was out of the NRSV, which is a translation used in the ELCA a lot and other churches. But I want you to hear this verse as if you were a 12, 13-year-old junior high kid. Then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. You still missed it. It's okay. He thought that it would be great. And he found this text on his own. He thought it would be great that when the moment came that he was going to be asked to speak a Bible verse in front of people in worship, you know, in front of mom, in front of grandma, in front of everybody else, that he would get to say these words because they're in the Bible. Shut up. Now you got it. Now, I didn't become the lame pastor in that moment and suddenly say, oh, it's about God and the Holy Spirit and the flames of fire moving with your body. I didn't ruin it for him. And we all smiled. It was actually kind of funny when he did it. But it's a great verse. And you might hear a verse like that coming from the quiet kid in the group, and you might think to yourself, that kid's destined. He's going to become a pastor. He's going to become a preacher, a prophet. He's going to be running congregations. He's going to be doing all these great things. You might have that thought, especially on a day like today where we're celebrating the whole church because of Pentecost, and you would be wrong because that's not where God needs him. God needs Jake to be a mechanic, and he's a really good mechanic because he's good with his hands. He's always been good with his hands. He always had that amazing ability to just like take things apart and put them back together and he didn't need manuals or anything like that. Never had any extra screws missing like maybe some of us would have. He could, he could just do it. The first vehicle he learned how to drive was his grandpa's tractor sitting on his grandpa's lap. This old, old, I think it was a farm all, some old, old tractor that I know he still has because once in a while, and he doesn't hang out on social media much, but once in a while, he will throw up a picture again at Grandpa's tractor, and it's, it's immaculate, as one would expect. And he doesn't hang out on social media, but once in a while, his friends will tag him, showing him going off to the races because he's built his own modified cars, because he loves to race. We have this text for today. We are in Pentecost, so of course we have the Acts reading, no disregard to the Gospel of John. It's lovely and all, but we're here to hear Acts and we have this reading on this particular day, and sometimes this particular day and this particular reading is described as the birth of the church or the start of the church, and maybe that's true. I'm not so sure if it's true. I would actually make the argument 2,000 years later, we're still trying to figure ourselves out. But we have this text where the Holy Spirit sweeps in with this roaring flame and with this roaring wind and lights all the disciples on fire and blows out the windows and blows out the doors and sends everybody out into the street. And as they're being sent out in the street, not knowing where they're going, at the same time, the Holy Spirit is sweeping up all of these people and to put them into the disciples' presence. So they are now surrounded by all of these people. And they're speaking and they're not sure why they're speaking or they're not sure where they're going, but here's the Holy Spirit moving them along. As the text goes, Peter is the one who is preaching first. We don't know if it's because we jumped up on that soapbox or because of all the other disciples backed away very quickly and he was left standing. Doesn't matter. He starts preaching. Some of us who might know Acts chapter 2 know at the very end of it, 3,000 people from those crowds were baptized. So it sounds like the birth of the church. It sounds like the start of the institutional organization that we now call church. It also doesn't help that as Peter is preaching, he's referencing Joel, and you don't need to know this, but just so that you know, the prophet Joel loves the idea of holy assembly. That's his phrase. He talks about how we are being called into holy assembly, that we are meant to be together. We are meant to hear God's words spoken through each other, to remember our brokenness, our sinfulness, how we've broken ourselves, we've broken our relationship with God, our relationship with our friends, our family, creation itself. So when we are together, we confess that. We seek reconciliation, the reparation of relationship. And through all of that, we are then going to witness God's holy presence, which is what Luke, or I should say what Peter is referencing. 
So all of that sounds like church. It all sounds like organized religion. It all sounds like institutional church, and we are here to celebrate all of that. And I suppose to some extent that is true. But we should also remind ourselves that God is not lighting you on fire with the Holy Spirit just to keep the building warm. You're being lit on fire so that you can speak a holy word. We have Peter. Peter does all the talking in this particular reading, and later on, Peter will just keep talking. He does a lot of talking in the book of Acts. And if we were to read the whole book of Acts, we would see that there's two main characters, or it gets boiled down to, it seems, two main characters, Peter and Paul. And both of them head out into the world, sent out by the Holy Spirit to start churches, which is great. It's great for them, great for us, otherwise we wouldn't be here this morning but it can add a little bit of pressure when we start thinking about ourselves speaking a word of God. That when we leave this space lit on fire by the Holy Spirit, which I hate to disappoint you, but you've all been lit on fire by the Holy Spirit simply because we have been baptized, we have been bound to Christ, which means we are moved by the Holy Spirit. But it may seem like then, well, then we've got to share our story, we've got to speak God's word, and we've got to do it in such a way that's going to compel other people back into this building, back into the institutional church, back into organized religion, because that seems to be what the Holy Spirit wants of us. And that's where we become intimidated. That's where we become hesitant. That's where we disbelieve that we have anything of value to say. Sometimes you might feel like you're speaking gibberish. Certainly sometimes I feel it as well. Sometimes you acknowledge that sometimes I am speaking gibberish. We're all on the same page. So I want to invite you this morning, and with all the weight and all the impression of the early church and the first church and the Holy Spirit and all these people getting baptized and all these great results happening, I want to invite us to focus on verse 3. Folks, verse 3 in our text says that the tongues of flame are dancing on the heads of every disciple, not just Peter. Every disciple was in that room. Every man and woman who was in that room worshiping early in that morning, when the Holy Spirit arrived, they are all lit on fire by the Holy Spirit. They are all sent out. I also want to invite us with all the weight and the heaviness of the first church and baptizing people and getting people into this space and all that kind of stuff, I want to invite us to take all of that and let's just push it off to the side. It's great and it's important and maybe another sermon we can reflect on that, but for now, let's just push it all off to the side. Let's push off to the side the buildings, the stained glass, the liturgy, the music, the prayers, the importance of it and the heaviness of it slide it off to the side and focus on the disciples who are lit on fire by the Holy Spirit. Let me ask you just one question. Who has God surrounded you with? Who is around you that listens to you? I hate to disappoint you, but there are people in your midst, not just now, but even out on the field, at the park, at work, at shop, wherever you are, there are people who listen to you, who seek wisdom from you, who seek guidance from you, who watch you to interpret for themselves how to walk in the world. Now, when I say that out loud, that sounds incredibly intimidating. It sounds a little terrifying, and it, again, adds that weight of seriousness to it that we need to always be thinking about ourselves and our posture and the way we cut our hair and the way we dress because we are always representing God. Maybe again for another sermon, but Again, push all that away. Who has God surrounded you with? The disciples are surrounded by strangers at the time, but they're surrounded by people who are listening to them. And every disciple who goes out there, they're all speaking. And they're all speaking because God tells them to speak, but they're not sure what they're saying. To each other, they can't really hear each other. It all sounds like gibberish. What matters is that the people who are gathered by them hear God. And that's not, by the way, because of the disciples, because they could very well be speaking gibberish to each other. But because they are speaking and the crowds are listening, the Holy Spirit moves the crowds to hear God. So who surrounds you? Who listens to you? Who is learning about God from you? Because there are people in your midst who are listening to you. They are hearing God from you. I recognize the weight of that. 
And I recognize the seriousness, seriousness of that, but it is also joyful. It is also meant to be a relief to know that God is the one doing the work, that we could just really be walking in the world, but we have our groups, we have our people, we have folks who are watching us out of the side of their eyes because of maybe it's respect, maybe it's adoration, maybe it's because of goals, maybe it's because of frustration, who knows? But God speaks through you. And there again, there's actually nothing you can do about that because you've been baptized in these waters, you are bound to Christ, so when you die with Christ, you rise into new life. And because of that, the Holy Spirit is moving through you, you've already been lit on fire. As Jake tells us out of Jeremiah chapter 20, there's already a fire burning in your bones, it's within your flesh. You can't help yourself, you are speaking God's very presence simply because of who you are, because you are a gift. You are designed by God to be a gift, a proclamation of God's presence in this world, wherever you are in the world, not just in buildings like this. Now it's true, we did our, Joel's right, we are supposed to gather together into holy assembly because we forget, we go astray, we do our own thing, reliably we turn away from God. Which means then we turn away from our friends, we turn away from our neighbors, we turn away from the people we hang out with, people who we love, we break relationships, we shatter creation. So yeah, we need to get back together because we need to remember what we have done, but we more importantly need to remember that we are forgiven, we are redeemed, and that the Holy Spirit is continuously moving us towards reconciliation, the rebuilding of relationship. We need that in spaces like this. So we gather in spaces like this so we can receive a word of grace, so we can remember again that the Holy Spirit really is moving through you as the Holy Spirit is moving through me. We speak those words to each other, we hear those words from each other, and then we are sent back out, lit on fire. And where we go, there's our holy assembly. Your holy assembly might be on the field, it might be at the park, it might be at the shop, it might be in the office, even if you're stuck behind all those dreadful cubicles. Your holy assembly might be at the hospital. Your holy assembly might be around a coffee table sipping wine with friends. Your holy assembly is where you are, where God has organized people to dwell around you, where you are hearing God from others and others are hearing God from you. Those are sacred moments. Those are gift moments. Those are opportunities for us to learn and hear about God, and those are opportunities for us to speak in whatever language and terminology and words that we use, trusting that the Holy Spirit will speak through you. In our reading, the disciples are sent out. Well, okay, they're kicked out of the building. They're lit on fire, and they just are talking. And they're not going in any particular direction. They're not going with any sort of agenda. They just start talking. The Holy Spirit does the work. The Holy Spirit does the work through you. Because just as much as you need to hear words of grace, you need to hear words of forgiveness, you need to hear words of redemption, peace, justice, all the words we bounce around in these walls, your neighbor, your coworker, your colleague, your loved one needs to hear those words. Because these words aren't designed to be locked into walls like this. They are designed to be in the world. Because that's where God's people are. That's where you are. So we go and we speak and we play and we work and we pray, and we dwell, and we do all the things that we do, trusting that somewhere along the way, God will do the heavy lifting. God will do the speaking and the revealing. Because people in our midst are longing to hear good news, longing to hear a word of grace. We have that word. We get to give that word away. So we are being sent out so that those who are in our midst can know that God is with them. Amen. Friends, will you please rise to your able.
Please be seated. Drake Johnson, come on up. Bring your people. We welcome this disciple into, into the body of Christ and the mission we share. He seeks the prayers and support of the community as he grows into maturity by the grace and power of God. I present Drake, who desires to make public affirmation of his baptism. In response to Jesus' invitation, let the children come unto me and do not hinder them. This young person has been baptized into Christ and clothed with Christ. <clears throat> As a member with us in the baptismal priesthood of Christ, he has been called to be a disciple of Christ and a servant of God in the world. As this young person stands on the verge of adulthood, we ask God to guide him into maturity and to walk with him as he begins to discern where adulthood may lead. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for Drake, whom you have made your own by water and the word and baptism. You have called him to yourself enlightened him with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished him in the community of faith. Uphold your servant in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Drake, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and the force the devil and all the forces that defy against God, if so, say, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God, if so, say, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. With the whole people of God, we confess our faith. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drake, who are you in this community? My name is Drake Johnson. I'm a child of God. I'm a man, a young man, but still a man in this community. My roots are, I come from Illinois. I may be the youngest out of three brothers, but... I'm the smartest, strongest, funniest, and the best at basketball of all of them. Uh, I get my resilience from my brothers, my love from my mother, and my skills from my dad. I get my patience from my grandparents, and I get my in intelligence, <laughs> intelligence from my aunts and uncles. And I thank the community and the members of this church for having faith and believing me. I am Drake Johnson. My people in my community need me. My church and family need me. I ask the Holy Spirit and the people of Trinity in Christ's name to strengthen, lead, and guide me and to bless me with your prayers. You have made public profession of your faith and spoken who you are in the midst of your community. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support this disciple and pray for him in his life in Christ? 
We do. We ask God to help and guide us. Come with me. Friends, will you please rise if you're able. Council members, come on up. As we pray for Drake and extend our blessing upon him, you all are invited to extend this blessing as well. Those of us who are gathered here, let's lay a hand on our brother Drake and let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Lord God of our ancestors, we thank you for what you have done and will continue to do with Drake. Walk with him in life and keep the evil one from obstructing his path. You see all. You know where the water is deep. Keep him from danger. Order his steps and guide his feet while he runs the race of faith. May the good work that you have begun in him be brought to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, man, time for you to stand up. Just have you pivot around so your adoring fans can see you. (laughs) Trinity, let us rejoice with this member of our church, this faithful disciple in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we are called to grow and sent to serve. We will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Congratulations. Applause is welcome. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Passionate God, you sent your spirit through the gift through the gifts of fire, wind, and word. As you equip the disciples for their work, equip us to bring the good news to all those who long for you. God in your mercy. Inspiring God, unite, you ignite the faith, our, oh, sorry. Inspiring God, you ignite our faith with enthusiasm and hope. Continue to burn in the hearts of all who have been baptized. We especially pray for Drake. Should we wait? <laughs> we uh, especially pray for Jake, who has claimed his faith as well as his family and all of us who care for him and remember our baptisms. God, in your mercy. Ever-present God, your spirit embraces all. Send your spirit of understanding to immigrants, refugees, and any experiencing language barriers. Safely guide those fleeing war and danger, especially those sent to cities without support or resources. God, in your mercy. Most merciful God, you anoint us with your spirit. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who seek your comfort, especially those we name aloud or in our hearts. We also pray for the family of Pastor Kara Baylor. God, in your mercy. Almighty God, you are our strength and our shield. We give you thanks for the members of our armed forces, past and present, 
and especially for those who have died while serving. May their sacrifices serve the cause of peace, and may our nation be ever grateful for their service. With your wisdom and strength, guide our military leaders to, and, give all, and give to all people a desire for justice and peace. God, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share the peace with your neighbors. Give them this form. It's got a QR code on it um, that a loved one, an adult, can scan in or they can get registered. Reminding them it is totally free. It's a little different this year for some of the kids who might know our bank from uh, prior years. This one's fair for weekend. Um, but it doesn't include ice cream. It includes all the songs, all the games, and all the things that we usually need for BBS. So commend this to them. Um, Reminded that out of the narthex from here going forward, probably in September, we're going to be selling travel tickets on to that exclusively beautiful film that's out there. And all the proceeds, 100% of whatever is brought in through that raffle, is going to be sent to Colton Holton County Domestic Violence Shelter and Resource Center that is in our rural county, which I am thrilled that a county like ours, which is lacking a lot of resources, has all the whole county. So if you want to support that organization, and you know, maybe they'll get a full out of the deal. Uh, buy your raffle tickets in the narthex and around, they will be around town all this summer. One last day is on the page, but just to kind of say it out loud, this will be my last weekend of the year until, um, you should probably. Apparently, that did not get the word. Um, at least we were worship leaders. Um, this will be my last Sunday here for the summer. I am grateful for the council and for all of you for giving me this opportunity to give us a bad amount of time to step away from some reflection. I am absolutely confident that um, Sandra and Karen are going to do a wonderful job um, helping, as they've always done, helping to orchestrate and uh, Keep us moving through the summer on different programs. I invite you to please continue to support our music ministry, support our education ministry, all the cool things we've got going on this summer. They're all going to be wonderful. And please, I know the temptation will be there. Maybe it's not. Maybe I should be more encouraged to come to worship. But I won't be here today. We are going to have some fantastic preachers all summer long. Um, we're going to have an opportunity to hear a whole bunch of different people who have different ideas and different wisdom that they're going to be sharing with you. And maybe they'll get a few ideas along the way. For myself, again, I'm truly grateful that you're giving me this opportunity. And it's not something, as someone who uh, is a good for going to it's not something I expected, but it is again. So thank you for that. And I will see you in September. But until then, for the new driver, and we will prepare to do it. Let us pray together. Make us worthy, Lord, to serve our fellow human beings throughout the world who live and die in poverty and hunger. Give them through our hands this day our daily bread, and by our understanding of love, give peace and joy. In your name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
betrayed our Lord Jesus, took bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and when he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Confident our Lord is at work in this meal, we offer the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
Let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, Sent into the world with Christ, let us pray. Gracious and holy God, give us diligence to seek you, wisdoms to perceive you, and patience to wait for you. Grant us, O God, a mind to meditate on you, eyes to see you, ears to listen for your word, a heart to love you, and a life to proclaim you. In your name we pray. Amen. Be blessed now in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this day and every day, wherever you may go. Amen.
Just two things. One, our sister Irene has gone with God. We have prayed for her family. Her funeral will be Wednesday at 11 o'clock here, visitation at 10 o'clock. So we hope you're able to stand with the Lefevre family and celebrate the promise of life with them. Also, as we are celebrating, please help us celebrate our brother Drake by having cake and all the fun stuff. It's right down the hall here. First door, well, okay, first door is actually bathroom. Bypass the bathroom, second door on the left. Free cake for everybody, and there's other stuff too, but there's cake. Free cake. Free cake. Best kind of cake. Best kind of cake. All right. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Cake? Yeah, you're with